Don't forget to check out the website, guys. Be sure to buy yourself some of my awesome merch to rock up to the car boots in. And also check out the helpful guides and blog posts. Hi guys, it's Adam and welcome to another video. So, in today's video I wanted to address um, uh, a few questions I've been getting, a few variations on different questions that I've been getting. Um, mainly on Instagram, I've, I think I've seen it in the comments on Instagram, I think I've also had a couple of people over the last month or two actually direct message me with this question or an iteration of this question. I've had it in my YouTube comments before loads, I've had it in uh, Thursday Talks, I think I might have had it in as well, and I might have elaborated somewhat in Thursday Talks on it. Um, but you know, I get this question of how do I learn about antiques, or how do I learn about ceramics, um, how do I get started with it all? Um, how did I myself learn about ceramics and all the rest of it and you know metalware and antiques and whatever else? When I first started off, uh, I, you know, in antiques and collectibles, I went down to the auction and I bid on a few lots. Now, I can't remember at this point whether I did any substantial amount of research into those lots or whether I literally just bid blind. And what bid blind means is that you just don't do any research and you just literally bid at the auction and, and you know, on a lot and you hope that there's going to be some money in there. Or you might, maybe you might see one item in there that's decent and you think, well, you know, I'm going to weigh it up and, yeah, you know, as an educated guess, I'm going to go for it or whatever. So I think that might have been what I did. So I went down to the auction um, and I bid blind on a couple of lots, or maybe I did a small amount of research. Just the lots that I was interested in, um, I think maybe one of them was metalware, maybe one of them was a ceramic job lot, etc. Maybe one of them was die cast, I'm not sure. Um, but what people can get themselves wrapped up in, and what I got myself wrapped up in at first was, ooh, there's so much on offer here, I want a little bit of everything. I want to learn a little bit of everything, I want to... Um, you know, I want to be knowledgeable in all these different areas. And it's kind of a trap that you get yourself in because you get overwhelmed. You go down to the auction and you go, oh yeah, I'll have that, I'll have this, I'll have the other. And you just simply don't have the knowledge there to be, to be able to, I don't know, understand all these different areas in a big way. So what I would suggest is first off, buying a few lots that you gra naturally gravitate towards. So whether that be metalware for you, whether that be ceramics, whether it be militaria, whether it be, I don't know, antique clothing and jewellery and stuff like that, um, whether it be uh, ephemera, your ephemera your even, that's something that I gravitate towards quite a lot these days. It certainly wasn't, I, I would avoid, avoid that like, I would have avoided that like the plague when I first started, but now I don't know what it is, I, I'd really like ephemera, um, things like newspapers and stuff really call to me. Things like um, booklets and leaflets and uh, transportation and sales brochures. Um, you know, trans so you get these um, brochures that are basically uh, sales brochures, um, and sometimes they're to do with transportation. And I really like getting them as well. So just naturally, at first, don't worry about. Um, anything really, just go to the auction, you know, see what you gravitate towards and then maybe if you want to buy buy a lot because that's the only way you're going to get your start is by actually starting, um, you know, have 20 quid or whatever set aside, 30 quid, 40 quid, 50 quid, whatever it may be, buy a lot or a couple of lots or three or four lots or whatever that you're interested in um, and then go home, research them on Complete and Sold, maybe do a little bit of research on uh, Google itself, there's a lot of, um, there is a lot of bad information out there, but there's also a lot of good information out there, there's a lot of really good sites that are managed by uh, people with a lot of experience in certain fields, uh, there's like a lot of metalware websites, and so I can't name them offhand, so I apologies on that, um, but they aren't too hard to find really on Google, but there's a lot of like metalware websites and ceramic websites with loads of information about history of companies and the history of the marks and all that sort of stuff. Of course, you could, as you get further into the kind of process of going to auction houses and getting a little bit more interested in it, um, you could maybe buy books on the specific field that, that you're interested in, metalware, 
Uh, you might want a, a good generic book to buy. Is uh, I don't know if I've got it around actually. I think it's in my cupboard. But it's uh, I think it's called the D Dealer Guides, and then it's uh, Silver Marks or something like that. And it's a little red or burgundy book. It's only about that. You know, it's kind of it's just bigger than like a pocket guide, uh, and that has all your silver marks in and stuff. Um, so that's obviously a good generic one to buy, especially if you're interested in in metalware and stuff. But um, yeah, so basically that's what I would suggest and then just go from there and you'll pick up your knowledge on the way you're not gonna um it's not gonna be too hard for you you know you're just gonna naturally pick things up and I I'm no expert in this field I haven't a clue on 99.5 percent of all antiques and stuff maybe even more than that because there's such a variety out there um but you don't need to be an expert in 99% of it. Literally, even if you're an expert in 5 or 10% of antiques, that's a huge range you're covering. And, uh, you know, I mean, look at it this way. These experts on TV, even the experts need to go to other experts to get knowledge in other fields. They're only, these experts are only ever an expert in a certain field, like, uh, what's his name? Paul Laidlaw, he's like an expert in military, isn't he? But if he wanted to go to something else, you know, like if he if he needed knowledge on, on another area of antiques, maybe glassware, for example, he might not know as much about glassware, so he goes to another deal. Now, he might do, I don't know the guy, he might know about glassware, but it's just an example. So, you know, it doesn't necessarily matter on how much you can cover it's just about enjoying learning about it and gravitating to the field that that you like like for me i've got a lot of ceramics on the bed i'm just about to do a whole video after this video actually and i like ceramics i gravitate towards them i like being around them don't really know tons about them i know a few marks i know a few makers i make up a price when i need to make up a price and i can't simply find any information um but you just naturally learn, like there's certain things I've naturally learned about, like simple little bits of knowledge, like, um, you know, glazes and how to identify whether something's hand painted or whether it's like trans uh, transfer printed, uh, what a reticulated plate is. These are all very basic things, but in force, once you, uh, you know, once you pick up on these little things over, you know, over a period of time and look, pick up on loads of these little things, it really does give you a good idea of identifying certain things over other things. So, you know, like certain things like identifying a reticulated plate over a not reticulated plate, that's a, a valuable little like smidge or nugget of knowledge. You know, it, it may not be anything incredible, but it, it's a good keyword as well, because if you go on eBay and... Um, you know, you don't know what a reticulated plate is and stuff, then you can't put that in there and someone might be searching reticulated or something like that or you're not accurately, dis or you're not describing the, the item as accurately as you could be. So it's kind of like also all these little nuggets of knowledge over a very long period of time of collecting all these different things and, and as I say, the makers and the marks and all the rest of it and, um, you know, silver marks and... Uh, you know, certain marks of factories, so like pool pottery or uh, World Crown Derby, certain marks, you'll be able to assess the age of them on um, because you'll be able to look at the marks and you'll think, oh, that's definitely a newer mark. Like, for example, the pool pottery, one of the pool pottery, the uh, 60s marks, 60s and 70s, is like a little oval and it's got what I refer to it as, as the devil fish mark because it's like a little fish and it's got teeth. I think I'm pretty sure it's got teeth. And then it's got, maybe it hasn't got teeth. Yeah, I think it has. Maybe it has got teeth. I'm not sure. But it has like little spikes on the back of it, if I remember rightly. I've got my poor pottery book in that, in that um, wardrobe there anyway. But it's in this like little oval. And then it's got that. And then it's got, I think, poor pottery. I have a pool there and then pottery at the bottom or poor pottery just at the bottom there. And that's, I think it's between 67 and 72, that mark. Um, so you know that that's a newer mark. And then the older marks go back from there. And, and really, you only need to learn about two or three different marks because then you can think well that's a newer mark and that's an older mark and then you know if you want to you can learn about a few of the marks in between and stuff but if you can identify one mark as a newer mark or one style of mark as a, as a fairly more modern mark and then one style of mark as a fairly older mark then you've got a, a you've, you can kind of get a good range by that so it's just about 
going along f for a ride really and just experiencing it and buy buy some buy some stuff just buy some stuff get involved and um hopefully you'll make some money along the way and hopefully you'll kind of learn along the way because that's exactly what i'm doing i'm just i don't know I, I don't know what i'm doing i'm making it up as i go along let's say that um it's, yeah, it's, it's just fun it's just fun that's how, that's how i treat it. i don't treat it as um I don't even really treat it as an expl exploration of knowledge anymore. I just treat it as it's fun. And and if it's not fun, it's, in my opinion, it's not worth doing. If you're, if you're getting into antiques, and this is another thing that comes up actually, and then I will end the video. I, this was just a real stream of consciousness that I don't even know has gone anywhere, but I hope it has kind of uh, given some people a little bit of information or help with regards to this subject. But... This is the other folly that people get into with antiques. They see people doing it, and this is with everything. I've had this before as well. They see people doing something, and they think, I really want to do that. And that's great. If you really want to do that, that's great. But a lot of people can be ingenuine in their want to do something. They just want to do it because they look up to a certain person. Not necessarily me, but I'm just doing this action as in any general person. But they look up to a certain person, and they want to do it. And um, you think, you know, that guy's really cool. I uh, I want to do what he does. And in a, in a way, it's kind of a feeling of you want to be that person. And that in itself is um, is not a good road to go down. You know, you don't you, you want to be yourself. You know, that's who you should should want to be. So um, you know, some people come along and say, I want to do that, and uh, they'll get involved. And they, they thought at first we wanted to do it. And they're getting involved and they're buying some lots and stuff, but it just really isn't for them. And some people will actually force to continue it, even though it's not kind of working out necessarily, or it's just not giving them, them any enjoyment. And uh, that's the worst thing, really, now, because you're not being true to yourself. You need to, you know, if you want to try antiques out, if you want to try and collectibles out, that's brilliant, and I would suggest you go for it. But you've got to realise that if you go down that route and if you buy this metalware or ceramics or whatever it may be that you feel at first gravitated towards, but then later down the road it's not necessarily really grabbing you, then um, you you may want to explore something else. Like, let me give you an example. Right. So when I pick up toys and games, fully enjoy picking up toys and games. Um, but when I pick up, I've got some, I've got an example here. When, this is Dickens wear from uh, Royal Dalton. I'm guessing, because I'm not 100% sure on this, but I'm guessing Dickens wear is a sub branch of Royal Dalton series wear because this to me looks very much like Royal Dalton series wear. So I'd have to double check that, but I'm pretty sure I'm, I'm correct on that. Um, so this is Dickens wear, which I'm guessing, as I say, is a sub branch of series wear. Um, and I really like series wear. Um, and when I pick these items up, this is going to sound incredibly weird, but I do need to express this. I feel this deep sense of enjoyment, passion, and I don't know, almost as if I'm kind of connected to this, these items, like... It's the weirdest feeling, like, um, I am positively charged with passion and enthusiasm for items like this. If that's not how you feel, then maybe you need to look into something else. People who do clothing, right? Brilliant. So glad they're doing clothing because it means that I don't have to and someone else can take the reins there. Um... And those people, when you, when you really look at someone who enjoys clothing, when you re on Instagram, Fake Rachel, uh, Caroline, Mrs. M, uh, Shopping with Sophie, all the, you know, loads of different people. Right? When you really look at people who do clothing and really enjoy it, you will see that that's what they live and breathe. Fake Rachel doesn't only sell clothing, she looks through these fashion catalogues and wants to know what's going on with fashion and, and that'll obviously help her in her, her eBay reselling. 
So, you know, with, with regard to selling clothing. So, it's like this absorption of you into these items, you know, this this absolute passion. And, okay, yeah, sometimes I don't always feel that passionate about these items. Sometimes there's days where I don't feel um, too passionate about my job or anything, and that's correct for anyone. You know, there's always going to be a few days here and there where you're not quite feeling it. Um, but at the same time, on a general over... over um, kind of overarching, but there's another word I want to use. Um, but in, in, in an overall sense, that's it, overall sense, um, I absolutely love this. I absolutely have so much passion for it. So you need to find that. And if you're just going to go down this road of trying to do it and really forcing yourself to do it, it's not going to work out too well for you. So if you want to try it, if you think that it's for you, brilliant, give it a go. Just get started. That's my one piece of advice. Go down to the auctions, have a look round, buy some items if you want, or just go around reviewing first time and then maybe next time buy some items. Uh, go on Complete and Sold, look at the Complete and Sold information. Go on the website, you know, buy a couple of books from that field um, and get involved. Uh, and, and hopefully it's for you. If not, think to yourself, right, I'm not enjoying this, so... Where, where else would I gravitate towards? And just go on to that next thing. Might be clothing. You might think, right, I'm going to gravitate towards clothing. And then try clothing for a bit. If it's not for you, leave it. Don't don't tr keep trying it. Move on to the next thing. Because the more chances you get over the amount of times you keep moving on, um, that'll mean that you get to the thing that you absolutely love a little bit quicker. And then once you're there, once you understand that's it, you know, not necessarily on I want to sell this and I want to make money on this, but more I want to do this because I feel this is like my duty, my passion, beyond money, beyond wealth, beyond anything like this, I would do this if money wasn't a thing, for example, you know, so, um, and then once you can get to that, once you can get to that, you can think, you know, I'm, I'm fine, I'm here, I'm happy, and um, yeah, I hope that anyone can get there, and I hope that people can actually get to that place, you know, and, and really um, feel a sense, a real deep sense of happiness with and fulfillment with the things that they're selling and reselling, so yeah, with that being said, we're getting close to 20 minutes, I really wanted this to be a 10 minute video, but you know, that's how it works out, it's how it goes, you know, I talk and talk and it ends up being 20 minutes. So, yeah, um, with that being said, guys, thank you very much for watching. If you haven't already, then please do subscribe. If uh, you did like this video, then please put a like on it. I'm not uh, necessarily saying you have to, but if you want to, then perfect. But then do that perfectly fine. Um, and what's the other thing I normally say? Well, I think that's about it, isn't it? Yeah, I think that's about it. Oh, and leave it. Oh, that's it. And leave any other comments down below. If you have any comments, questions or queries, have any more information to give on this subject, drop that down below as well. And uh, I will see you in the next one. So I will see you very soon, guys.